Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Boris is still not here. I wanted to check whether he recognizes this place. This is a part of Norway, Spitsbergen. Very, very high above the polar circle. And this is night time. I'm uh, thankful to organizers. For me, it's a great uh, pleasure to be here and to congratulate Boris, who is absent at present time. <laughs> but still, uh, I, would, uh, recall, I would recall our contacts. Actually, uh, it's very hard for me to believe that Boris is 60. Because uh, according to Shakespeare classification, I, I know him since, since uh, he was a schoolboy. And our contact started in 1976, when my friend Arkady Aronov asked me to write evaluation for his diploma, master diploma thesis. Probably he found out something that I was not too happy uh, because I had to write something, and he told, don't worry, this boy is unusually good. And that's, he was completely right. Uh, and uh, since then, uh, I think benefited a lot working together with Boris. And uh, most of this time, he, uh, he taught me to do some things. So I'm very grateful to him. We produced something like about a dozen papers together. And uh, always, he was the person who taught me how to do things. So mostly, we collaborated with what is now called nanophysics. And to illustrate it, I will uh, show you some picture how we did it. And I'm showing this picture because uh, the name of this dog is Nano. So this is, dog belongs to Boris, and his name is Nano. So we did nanophysics, and he was very helpful. Uh, and we did several things uh, with uh, Boris, and what I will um, tell about today is uh, somehow uh, continuation of the line about decoherence. So we wrote some paper, uh, review paper about that, and all participants of this team, they are here. Uh, I will talk about relationship between thermodynamics with simple driven quantum system and its decoherence. Uh, and the questions which I would like to address is the following. Is thermodynamics of a driven quantum system related to, uh, to its decoherence? And which protocol can be used to determine this relationship? So it will be not a review, it will be one simple story. So why uh, uh, I started being interested that I am newcomer to this field? And uh, mainly a driving force of this uh, work is Yuka Pekala from Helsinki. Uh, and, uh, Japanese group uh, doing experiments, uh, trying to find non-equilibrium thermodynamic of qubits. And uh, everything is initiated by support uh, from European Union program Project Infernus, which is uh, uh, spelled out as information fluctuation and energy control in small systems. So uh, it means that people are interested to study works uh, made on some system, on some quantum system, try to find statistics of this work and try to relate it to some general principles. It's a very tricky business because uh, if people work uh, with small systems and in low temperatures, it's not easy uh, to measure actual temperature to see whether it does exist and so on. So people are hunting for some exact relationship which allow to check uh, validity of experimental data, consistency. And this uh, project is more or less about that. This is a brief plan at what we're going to do. First of all, uh, I'll start to tell motivation. And I will uh, tell something about uh, the relationship which people uh, is quite common to check at present time is Jarzinski equalities and try to see how you can check this, equ this equality in a simple quantum devices when you can keep track of what is going on. This is my program. I wanted to give some examples, but I put it in gray because most, of, most probably will not have enough time to go for that. 
Uh, well, before starting that, I was very confused because uh, I was grown up, educated in Soviet system, Soviet uh, where everything was based on Landau textbooks, and according to conventional thermodynamics, I didn't understand how we can even speak about thermodynamics of a driven system. Usually, what you can, uh, if you open textbook, you can read that you have two states, say A and B, both are equilibrium. You can define free energy between. Uh, for these both states, calculate difference. And if you uh, make some work, this work should be at, le uh, at least bigger than difference in free energies. And you get equality if you do it very slowly, quasi-statically. So you have only inequality, inequality only uh, uh, one situation, and you cannot uh, propose any relationship which uh, you can check. So out of equilibrium, according to conventional thermodynamics, one has to treat each system individually, do some non-equilibrium science about that. And I can tell that uh, that was my, uh, uh, my attitude to all that. Like, happy families are all alike. Every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. So you have to discuss non-equilibrium systems uh, uh, just separately for each system. Uh, then appeared uh, this kind of uh, uh, formula which is called Jarzinski equality. And this is an equation which relates free energy difference between some equilibrium systems and average, uh, averages or, uh, special averages of the works uh, needed to uh, transfer a system is one, uh, from one state to another. So this reads like that, that you have to uh, beat this inverse temperature. Different. So you have the system A, which uh, exists at some given temperature. Then you change external conditions. And you construct, construct another equilibrium system at the same temperature, but uh, the system corresponds to external conditions. For that system, you can define free energy. So difference in free energies uh, should be uh, average over all ways uh, of changing uh, external conditions. So uh, it doesn't matter how fast it takes place, uh, still this uh, should work. And uh, this, uh, uh, so you relate equilibrium states with non-equilibrium processes. And uh, more or less, this, uh, uh, there are several derivations which are uh, more or less uh, uh, strict for classical system and somehow controversial for quantum system. I will not go through this derivation, but uh, they are mostly based on reversibility of uh, dynamical equations, both in classical and quantum mechanics. So this is one of the examples. Suppose you have gas uh, and a piston. And this is state A. Uh, then you push the piston and make, uh, change the volume, arrive at system B. And then you construct artificial system, uh, equilibrium system at the same temperature, which corresponds uh, to this position of the piston. That's, uh, uh, it's a lot of philosophy about that, which I don't exactly understand. People tell that it's temporary violation of uh, second law of thermodynamics because they speak about uh, big fluctuations. There are no miracles here. This is, a, uh, this is the uh, matter of correct, uh, cho uh, choice of correct set of representative fluctuations and taking them into account. There is a very beautiful paper by Lou and Grossberg which they discussed this generic classical case uh, where you have a piston and the molecules of the gas and uh, they explicitly calculate distribution function and show which fluctuations are responsible for the Dzerzhinsky inequality in classical, in classical gas. It's not so simple because to keep track of that, you have to uh, take into account uh, not typical fluctuations, rare fluctuations. So you have to wait a long time. And uh, if the system volume is large and the piston is moving with great speed compared to some velocity for a very short time, you have to uh, wait exponentially long to pick up the fluctuations, the proper fluctuations. 
Anyway, you have exact relationship, and people who work with uh, driven system, they are very much interested to make a cross check, to, uh, uh, to see whether they uh, get things correct or not. And uh, what will, I'll tell about uh, one of the protocols, how to uh, make it with a quantum system. Regarding quantum system, it's uh, much more difficult because there are different definitions of work in and uh, people don't agree how to define work for a rather complicated arrangement. So I will do it for a simple system. So suppose we have two level system. And uh, uh, then the total work contains a change of internal energy. Internal energy just, if you measure it, uh, you have uh, initial state and final state and the difference uh, is the difference uh, in internal energy sometimes is called useful work in this business. And also you can emit photon or phonon and then you have dissipation. So if you have a cyclic process, the Jarzinski inequality uh, uh, equality requires that if you take into account all the processes and all the works, you have to get this average for one. That you can check. And there are many papers today, even in good journals, where people uh, really check this and claim that everything is consistent with this inequality. So uh, how to uh, do it with a quantum system, having something simple. And so we uh, decided to go along the proposals, uh, so-called two measurement protocol, where the state of the system is measured, so you know where you where you uh, start, then you wait a bit, and then apply drive. After some, uh, after some drive, special drive, you leave system alone, and then it can decohere. Then you do one more pulse project at an initial state, and then measure. Actually, in the experimental setup, which we discussed, there is also some very precise colorimeter. So they can also. Uh, identify the quantum jump and they can discriminate between absorption and emission. So they now know even from this uh, what was initial state. If it's in, is emitted, then it was excited state. If it's sort of ground state. So uh, for a closed system, if you don't have any jumps and any inelastic processes, then uh, you have uh, to get the average of uh, U uh, equal to one, and uh, this is not the case for realistic system because it open, it, it's open. You can emit or absorb uh, some quantum degrees of freedom, photons or phonons. So what uh, what I'm discussing can we extract useful information from the, uh, this average? This, uh, this, uh, this average should not be one. It should be something different. But is it reasonable? Is it possible to extract something? My answer will be yes, and I will show uh, how people do it experimentally. So uh, this is so-called quantum jump, jump approach, which was developed for um, quantum optics. That, uh, that's what we use to calculate this average. So the idea is following. Suppose you uh, study a system for a very short period. And the probability to have a jump uh, is very low. You have either zero jumps or one jump. Then you can, uh, what you have to do, you have to analyze density matrix for the system. But, you, but there is a simplified method uh, which uh, works on the level of uh, wave functions. Uh, and you construct some non-Hermitian uh, motion and some non-Hermitian Hamiltonian which takes into account the possibility to have a jump. Quantum mechanics is Hermitian, so this is a model equation, and you have to derive it. You have to derive that uh, if you uh, study uh, dynamic of a system for a short period, but you don't make, uh, don't make a jump, jump, you have to take into account a possibility, some finite probability to have the jump. And in this way, you create, you, you create uh, this non hermitian Schrodinger equation. What you have to do, you, have to, you can, can show that it's fully equivalent to bloch redford equation for density, met, uh, for density matrix. So this is Hamiltonian. In our Hamiltonian, we have uh, 
this uh, diagonal, diagonal Hamiltonian, this is possibility to have noise or decoherence, which you take into account, which just uh, moves levels in time. And this is the part which takes into account finite probability uh, to have a jump. And this is drive, drive of the system. So we can do it. And uh, uh, if you work with that, uh, we can represent uh, the wave function as a uh, combination, linear combination of ground state and excited state, and analyze <coughs> motion of these amplitudes. This is technology, and I will probably, uh, this is very, the system has advantages uh, compared to the density matrix because you know, can easily di uh, write diagrams for different processes here and make it systematic both analytically and numerically. Okay, so let me uh, tell uh, answers. Suppose you are very, uh, uh, very long times uh, in your protocol, much longer than uh, inverse rate of quantum jump. Then what you get, uh, all these occupation numbers are equilibrium, and you get for uh, the difference uh, between uh, exponentials of the work and one, depending on temperature. So if you have a long time, if temperature is uh, uh, low, uh, then uh, you have uh, big differences. If temperature is high, you don't have differences. And this is a way to check what kind of what <coughs> actual temperature your system uh, has. If you can trace that, you know what are the, what is the temperature of your device, not of your thermal bus, but of your device. Uh, now let me. And so the difference doesn't depend on decoherence; it's fully thermodynamics. Okay, now let's uh, discuss the protocol. The protocol is following. We do measurement of the system of the time T1. Uh, we apply uh, pi over two pulse, then keep it for the uh, time tau two, and then put another pi over two pulse, and then after some time, do one more measurements. This is the protocol which we use. Let me uh, depict it. So if there is no decoherence, I do the following. I start with uh, some eigenstate, for example, spin up, rotate it, then it, nothing happens, and then in the rotating frame, and then you finish uh, a measure system in some other state. If you have the coherence, what you get, you get the following. You start with some state, rotate it. When it's uh, parallel, there is no decoherence uh, due to pure dephasing, so you can split the time when you have dephasing, and then you have a trace of this dephasing when you, when you do measurements. This is the uh, two measurement protocol. And uh, we can do calculations, which I don't have time to explain. But uh, let me give you the answer. The answer is the following. So if we have uh, at most one jump, this average we can measure, we can measure, we can measure. Since we measure the system, we know the uh, difference in internal energy. Uh, it's about a uh, million repetitions of this experiment, so statistics is made, and according to the statistics, uh, this average depends on the times. If these times go to zero, you get one, uh, system is closed, and uh, an elastic process doesn't take place. For finite times, you have uh, uh, this expression, which depends on the temperature, and it depends on the um, amount and mechanism of decoherence, because delta phi 2 is the only uh, phase shift which is uh, accumulated during the uh, during, uh, middle part of the protocol. So, uh, this is, uh, so this is our central result, very simple. But it allows to make experiments, at, and it allows to study this uh, distribution function. Why it's possible? Why I don't have to wait so long? Because only a few states is two-level system, so you can have either there is jump or no jump, or, uh, and probability of more than one jump uh, is uh, low. So we did some numerics, uh, and this numeric shows that at small times it's, it gives exactly analytic, the same as analytical result, but we can do it for longer period and study more jumps. And what's good is that we can also have direct, we can calculate distribution function and distribution functions of the energies is measurable. 
So this is cartoon of the experiment. Experiment is, ma is made uh, in Japan, and this is Yasuo Nakamura and his student Yato Masumoto. Uh, they have a transmon qubit, and they do exactly uh, the same protocol which uh, I, uh, I explained. So these are characteristics of uh, the qubit. It's quite a good qubit. Uh, so they made full spectroscopy of this qubit. So they know left-hand side of this equation and right-hand side of this equation. There, is, there are no fitting parameters. So this is a check of the consistency and the quality of uh, how uh, this uh, device works. Uh, it's a lot of experiments because they have uh, make many repetitions. They do many repetitions. This is why I'm still not allowed to demonstrate uh, the experimental data because they are still in progress and they do double check. But the f first results are extremely encouraging. So we get proper numbers without, without adjustable parameters. Uh, and if you uh, properly define temperature. Uh, so the temperature turns out to be a few percent uh, more than what they estimate uh, from the direct measurement of a qubit. So this is consistent system. And uh, actually, uh, people are, uh, now think that the system is fully characterized and uh, they want to modify the system in order to make uh, feedback-related uh, experiments, so to make uh, something like quantum Maxwell demon based on based on, on fully characterized device. You have to characterize it; otherwise, it's very difficult to uh, see, uh, speak about distribution of the values, entropies, and so on. So this is how it stands for today. Uh, what is important, and I will not uh, be long, uh, not spend long time on that, is that you have average of the cos uh, cosine and delta phi two. It's the same as you get for free induction signal if you work with magnetic resonance arrangements. So you can study uh, the mechanism of the coherence. Uh, you can study how this average depends on the time. And uh, uh, this is just in progress. And uh, this, uh, I did it uh, for very uh, just simple model, which is not physical. Uh, I assume the distribution of phase shift is Gaussian, and then you get uh, the result, which contains exponential of tau two squared. Uh, we work a lot on the case of uh, one over f noise. <coughs> for one over a noise, distribution function is different. It's not Gaussian. I will not uh, remove all this skip all this uh, business because I don't have time for that. Otherwise, I will miss dinner. But I will show you the distribution function. This is a distribution function for one of wave noise. It's far from being Gaussian. So then, depending on uh, different situation, you have different function of uh, uh, time delay between two pulses. That's what uh, they're working at right now and try to check how does it work? I think I'm approaching uh, the end of my talk, uh, but I want to emphasize the following. So the cent uh, central result uh, summary. First, uh, two measurement protocol turns out to be an independent tool for studying thermodynamic relations in driven systems. And the central result is the average between this quantity, uh, is a relationship between this quantity and uh, the coherence, temperature, and it depends on the <laughs> protocol, on the protocol which people use. Uh, if the right hat sign is known, then uh, Jarzinski equality can be checked only by measurement, measuring statistics of the internal energy. You don't need uh, to measure photons or phonons. Right now, Yuka Pekala is uh, preparing system uh, a precise calorimeter, which, allow, uh, which will allow measuring uh, some quantum jumps for uh, energy which is transferred to the heat, and then it will be another functionality to check this relationship. And another point, if you uh, can uh, measure these statistics, do many measurements, make average, and then after this average, 
uh, know it as a function of all times, you can find out the same information uh, about the coherence and qubit from direct spectroscopic measurements, so uh, measurements in real time. So this, uh, if you know the statistics, you can uh, use this relation to find out the coherence in the qubit. Well, I think I can stop on that. There are some, uh, and uh, thank you for the attention. And uh, of course, uh, wish Boris happy birthday. <laughs> You haven't seen the pictures which I showed in the very beginning. <laughs> but I'll show you. Thank you. Thank you very much.